All right, before we got cut off there, we were working with uh, trying to get the cutting off that rounded edge on the phone. All right, so right now we're looking at the bottom, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the front. What we're looking at then, we're going to go to the bottom. It's going to go like that. So looks like uh, the flat end is going to be on the top right over here, located this top line here. So it's got to be flat. And this back side down here has to be curved. All right. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is try and get all of, um, what is it called, uh, geometry onto this one surface. Because as you can see right now, we only have the rectangle, which is actually flat. Um, our two um, sides over here, uh, right and left side, are not actually on the sketch because they're not actually on this plane. So in order to get them to project onto this plane or this sketch, we're going to go ahead and use project geometry, which will take it and make basically a straight line to the sketch. And you can see as I click on these lines, they reappear onto the sketch as a usable and viable uh, dimensioning or tool to actually cut away with. So now that we have that going for us, we have to now figure out uh, how we're going to actually going to cut away here. So I'm going to try and make an arc. We're going to go ahead and basically make an arc so it swoops underneath like that, making the back end of it a nice smooth uh, arc in the back and goes throughout the whole entire phone. So in order to do that, we're going to have to use a caliper once again and measure what is the distance on the sides of the phone compared to that top end. So if I'm going to go ahead and turn this sucker on and we're going to open it up and find out what the height is there on either side. So about two point or sorry, probably 0 0.23 inches so we're looking for, so we're going to have to have that on the back side there. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a line and click on the top, bring it straight down, and we can put it anywhere. Um, I would prefer just to lock it to the line and not lock it to the midpoint because you see that green dot, that means it's locking into the midpoint of that line. Um, that's fine and all, fine and dandy. Uh, but if I do that, then I'm going to have to cancel that midpoint lock when I go to dimension this because I'm pretty sure it's not going to be on the midpoint. So go ahead and just click it straight down line and follow that up with the opposing line, same deal. You can actually make it uh, parallel with that that dotted line showing that it's going to be parallel with that line that the dots go to. Let's go ahead and click that. Go ahead and go and grab our dimension tool. It's right up over here. Click on that. Bring it down over here. And we said that was a 2.3. That's the distance. Uh, go back. Make sure you guys are highlighting the uh, line you want there. Or click on the dot and then click on the top dot. Bring it out and then that, that still dimensions the line. Either highlighting the line or highlighting its endpoints will dimension the line. So then go ahead, 0.23. Alright, so now we have our two lines there. Now we want to make an arc which goes from those two corners and then peaks at the very middle of that rectangle there. So go up there and we're going to get ourselves the arc tool here. I'm going to bring it down and show you different arcs. Um, we're going to use a three point arc, simple. Um, that's what we really want. Um, but we also have the tangent arc which will uh, go ahead and be tangent to a line of some sort. And then we have the center arc which you make the two lines and then you're going to go ahead and make you know where your center is going to be. It's going to make it basically a circle for where it is. But right now we're going to be working with a three point arc. It's actually going to be the most common arc you're going to be using, at least from my experience. So you're going to go ahead and click your uh, start point, the arc. Once again, making sure it's green, meaning that it's going to be connected to that line that originally made. And go ahead and connect it to the other side, making sure it's green, that's to that point. And as you can see, the computer is now making an arc based on where my third point will be. Now, probably already guessed, we're going to make that center peak at the midpoint, the green line right there. And now we have an arc. The last thing that we want to do now, um, which I did not uh, describe here, and the last thing because you know we made a complete geometry, but it has to be fully dimensioned. 
are um, at least closed. Um, right now if I want to go ahead and uh, try to extrude this, it would not recognize any of these uh, surfaces as a feasible extrusion except for this yellow part in the center because that's a closed surface, fully dimensioned. But we want to actually make our own. So go ahead and grab your line tool again and we're just going to complete this and close it. The way I like to best describe this feature of trying to get everything to go like that is that you want to um, have it done kind of like the paint feature in, uh, in uh, paint in Windows. Meaning that like you can't have any open openings on it. If it has openings, it's going to leak through and it's not going to work. And then you're just going to have the whole entire page is going to become one color rather than just a section that you specifically, you know, made to close off. So now we're going to go ahead and finish our sketch again. So go up here and click on Finish Sketch. And then we're going to go ahead and click on our Extrude. And we're going to go ahead and select that surface that we made right there. So you can see it highlights all in green. Um, other things, like I said, that yellow brick that was fully dimensioned and fully closed, that's going to be a viable thing to click, but we're not going to click that. We don't want that. Okay. Alright, so now it's going to try and extrude. But as you can see, we don't want to extrude. We want to take whatever this goes through and keep it and delete the rest. Now we could have, instead of trying to make a the box that we made here and made the negative, I like to call it the opposite side of it, we could cut and go through. That would have worked too, but in this, we're going to use a different feature, and we're going to use the intersect. So wherever this hits on this body, it's going to keep. Whatever it doesn't hit, it's going to delete, if you understand what I'm trying to get at here. And the next thing we're going to do is that we don't want it just to be 0.37. We want it to go throughout the whole entire thing. So you can go right over here on the side, and you can just go through all. So throughout this whole entire thing, it's going to go ahead and just grab whatever it touches. Whatever it doesn't touch it is going to just go ahead and delete. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that mark there. And now, if you go ahead and look at the bottom again, we got that nice curved surface. And you know, and for, and for the sake of it, because I know most likely it probably doesn't stand out gray against gray here, probably would be smart if I go ahead and uh, change it to a different color here. You don't really need to know this for right now. This is for later on, but I'll just go ahead and just click down here my materials. I'm I'm running this in the, a try screen, so my screen's a little bit messed up. That's why uh, yours might be a little bit wider um, than mine because it, my computer believes that it's making a small window. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and find myself a nice bright color. So I'm gonna just do dark green. There we go. So now it's a little bit more easy to see that you had that natural arc going on in the back of the foam. Now in reality, um, we have the same thing going on with the phone on the other side. It's flat, and then it arcs on the other side, kind of like a really, really um, small fillet, but it elongates. I could go ahead and do that on this side and just repeat the process, but it's such a, a uh, not very noticeable that I'm not really going to worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as is. I just want to move on to other things we can do here. Um, the next most feasible thing that make it, you know, actually start looking like it is, uh, if you don't notice, but, um, the phone has a chamfer, a very small, slight chamfer that revolves around this whole entire phone on either side, and is where the brush metal kind of appears, if you haven't seen, you can Google a picture of a HEC one, but you got a nice chamfer, which is, um, a straight line that is at an angle compared to the, to the corner, so you're kind of making, like, kind of a granite countertop when you kind of you know chisel away the side of it to make it nice and smooth um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, make a chamfer on here now we're going to be using this as a feature so we can edit it right from the 3d part without having to make a, um, a sketch and then having to cut through it we're just going to have a 3d feature tool called chamfer that will just do it without having to make that sketch so we're going to go over here and slide up to our modify uh, branch here and that's your chamfer now I'm going to go ahead and measure just like I did before. You want to figure out what your dimensions are beforehand. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to go ahead and turn this back on. Chamfer is like 
0 0.08. So almost 0.1, but we're going to go 0.08. So I'll go ahead and 0 0.08. Type that in there. And now we're going to start selecting corners, or sorry, yeah, corners or edges, which are going to have the chamfer applied to them. So on this, it's going to have a chamfer revolving around the front end of the foam. Let me go ahead and click on that, and you'll see that now it makes a chamfer across the whole foam. And we're going to go ahead and rotate it around. And we're going to do the same thing for the back side. And after we've selected both of our lines, as you can see, you know, I'll zoom in here a little bit. You can see that the, the computer, if you have this sort of preset on your um, mind, since I have a pretty decent graphics card, I'm having it already render um, what the chamfer is going to look like before you even hit the edge. If you have a lower running, like a laptop or something like that, I would say turn this feature off and don't change the color of it and leave your view into uh, just a standard view what it would what it, what it appear in the beginning. That's easiest for the computer to understand and render and do all its work. Uh, but you know, if you got a decent computer, leave this on. But right now, even 0.08, it looks a little bit too big. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it a little bit small and go 0.05. That looks a little bit more realistic to what I'm looking at. Um, like I said, I'm guesstimating this. Uh, I don't have you know all the tools I do back in my office, but I'm going to go ahead and go with this. And I'm going to go ahead and hit that green shut mark, and it's going to complete it. And now. You notice you have a nice chamfer edge along the top end, the flat surface, and also you have a chamfer that follows that nice curve that we made on the back all the way around. Now, that to me looks more like a HTC One than it ever did before. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to make the screen on the front of it. Uh, like I said, multiple parts would have been the best thing to do on here, but we're just, I mean, I call this like painting, you know, kind of like, uh, just painting it on there. It's not really a physical thing, but we're going to, we're going to paint it on there. Um, in order to make the screen on here, I'm going to go ahead and click on here and make a new sketch. So we got the face. Now I'm going to go use this, this handle. I call it a handle here. Um, but in reality, I can go up here and say create sketch on here, but I'm just going to use the create sketch button that appears on my handle here when I click on the face. And now I'm into sketch mode. Now I gotta figure out how I'm going to get the screen to go up here on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out the screen. And I'm only gonna need two dimensions rather than having to figure out the center and everything. I'll be measuring from either side of the cell phone. So I'll go ahead and hold this up and I'll kind of show my madness to how I'm actually doing this. But uh, I'm just measuring this top end here. And that's roughly like that. So 0.4 and point four for the other side too. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my rectangle tool. Once again we're going to, we have a stamp on. Now if you just open up the program automatically this is going to be set in there. Stuff you have to turn off if you don't like the snap feature but I do. And you're going to go ahead and snap to that yellow line. And I'm going to go ahead and snap to the other side of it. Grab my dimension tool. And uh, I'm going to project the geometry because I measured from the actual top of the phone, which was chamfered. And like I said, if it's not actually touching the sketch, it won't appear as real geometry. So you have to project it onto it. And I'm going to go ahead, pan it, and go down to the lower one. I'm going to go ahead and make an actual feasible thing in there. And then go ahead and click on this line, the line that I made appear on here, bring it back out here. And we said it is 0.4. Let's go ahead and do that. And again, now if you don't know what the pan tool, you can use the pan tool as a little hand there. Or if you're using a mouse and not a laptop, you're using the wheel on there. You're going to go ahead and depress the wheel and then you can click and drag. If you're coming from SolidWorks, it's a little bit different. That's actually your rotation um, if, you, if you're coming from SolidWorks and going to the vent there. All right, so now I have my screen there. It's all set. It's in the center. Looking good. I'm going to go ahead and hit Finish Sketch. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut into, select it, and cut into it. Cut feature. Now, um, since it's not uh, a part or whatever, I'm not deciding it to put another part in there, and I'm painting it, I use a uh, kind of a cheat. And what I do is I go and hit point, and I go 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. 
and that's just a really small surface that I'm taking away, but it gives me the line.